Hello everyone, this is Marius from the GeoDesign class and today we're looking a little bit more in depth into proper terrain modeling in Civil 3D. So since this last time we left off, you should have something like that, a sketch uh, present with already at least one or two surfaces in there and so far all these surfaces have been based off of polylines that we either created directly or converted a spline feature into a polyline using the pedit command and then use this polyline as our under our definition as a break line and this is a perfectly valid way of uh, creating surfaces but we just don't have that much control over over their resulting elevation using this method and why is it so because um, inherently a polyline is a 2d um, two-dimensional feature. So if I select the underlying polyline over here, it um, I can change its global elevation. So essentially assigning the same elevation to each and every single vertex, but I cannot alter these individually unless I would work with a 3D polyline. But then there is a particular way of working with polylines within a civil 3D, 3D and uh, Civil 3D refers to them as feature lines. So what I can do is under, I need to make sure that I'm in a Civil 3D workspace under the Home tab, I have this feature line button. When I click on the little down arrow right to the right of it, then I can, I am presented with different options for creating feature lines. And then because we already have an existing feature line sorry, a polyline that I would like to convert to feature lines would choose the option to create feature lines from object. Select that. And I'm going to be presented with another window over here. You can essentially accept all the defaults and it's going to ask you whether you should erase the existing entity. In this case, it's just going to remove the underlying polyline from the drawing. We're okay with that, hit okay. And so what happened now is if I hover over that, as I can see that there is a feature line and it, had, it has taken over the elevation information from my polyline. But what it also, you can, you can notice under the uh, prospector tab, my finished ground platform surface over here has this exclamation mark. I just need to right click on it and then rebuild it. And what happens is that right now it has updated the and the definition so it's not pointing to this old polyline anymore it's actually pointing to the feature line that we have just created from it and then so at first sight nothing has changed but what we can do now is when i hover over the feature line not the surface right i need to select the feature line then i'm presented again with this context sensitive menu over here there's a feature line related menu and then you will see um, these additional buttons available to you. It might be that, uh, that some of them are hidden. Um, so just make sure that, uh, that you click on the, uh, on the proper button to, to twirl them open. So in this case, it will be added geometry, added elevations. These two have to be turned on. So it might be that these uh, this ribbon is presented to you like that. Just make sure to click both of these buttons to expand additional features. Okay, so first thing that, uh, that you will see over here under Edit Elevations, you have this Elevation Editor button. When I click it, it opens yet another window. Civil 3 loves presenting information in, in separate windows, so you'd better get used to that. It can be smaller or bigger. You can always, you know, uh, if you have a bigger screen, you can shift it to the side and keep it open there. There's this so-called panorama window that is going to be popping up in Civil 3D pretty much all the time. And what it gives you is additional control over, over uh, the geometry or the elevations specifically for this uh, for the particular geometry. And what I can do here is I can click through it and then you can see uh, when I make it a little bit bigger, each time I select a vertex, uh, it highlights it. So if I click on this one, you can see that a triangle appears over there. 
if I select the 26.9, uh, the triangle is over here. And then both 0 and, uh, and 100 refer to the same vertex. So it sort of like starts counting over here, uh, from 0 goes, goes to 26, 74, and goes back to 100 meters of distance. So the station describes the distance between the points. Elevation describes the, the actual you know, uh, elevation value assigned to the, to the point. So let's just focus on this particular one over here. Let's say that I would like the... Um, and you can also see that the, what is the distance between individual points over here on the length. So I can see if this is my starting point, I can see that the distance to this vertex is 26.7 meters. And this one would be exactly the same. And then this is 47 meters. So if I want to keep this point at 5.7, but I want the platform to be sloping away from this point, then I can just lower the elevation over here. And the way I would do it is I would just click on, on the elevation value and let's say 5.6. And what it immediately does is it just calculates the difference in percentage um, in the elevation over here. So it's telling me the grade, so the slope from here to there is going to be 0.37%. And then from here till there, it's going to be 0 0.21. And here till there, it's zero because these points are still at the same elevation. So I can either, you know, Let's say my I'm designing for um, proper stormwater drainage, so I want this value to be at least one percent. So I can either start, you know, trying different values over here. So 545 is getting closer. Maybe it's 5.4. Now it's actually way too big. So I don't really know what this uh, this value could be. So I could be guessing it, or I can just type one percent over here, and it's going to change. Well, actually, it changed the, the wrong value, right? So I would like to uh, go back to 5.7, the initial one that I started with, and then I would actually uh, change this one to grade it to minus 1%, because it always sort of like looks ahead. So from here, if I'm changing that, that value, it will grade back to, uh, to, to the front, but I, I want to, to grade ahead, so I'm always thinking to the, to the front. So looking from here, if I want to have exactly the same drainage slope from, from this point to th that point, here I would actually be either grading backwards from here to say minus one as well. And then, so I kept this point at 5.7, and both of these points are at 5.432 right now. And then I can also tell that the grade between them is zero. So they are both at the same elevation. And now um, I can, I have really fine control over all of individual points over here. But my uh, surface over here is, is complaining that it hasn't been updated. So I can right click on it and I can just sell, set it to be rebuilt each time I introduce some changes. So rebuild automatic. And now just to verify that it actually is the case, then what I would do is I would add some um, labels to my new proposed surface. Remember these elevation labels, they are sampling the existing ground. So these are still sort of like on the outside. And so the way I would do it is I would select my finished ground platform surface and I would again go back to the context sensitive tab on the ribbon, add labels, spot elevations, and then using my object snaps, I would click into place and then I don't care about the looks right now, but I'm just clicking so that it's positioned where I want it to be. And then now I would move the other one out of the way. So the the old one so that we see the other ones a little bit better. And you can see exactly 5.43, 5.43, and the same is true over here. Right? So we have total control over, over these points. Now there's, you know, some, some would 
prefer working with this grading elevation editor. So again, how to access it, I have to have a feature line selected. Remember, not the surface, the feature line. So we're hard. if we want to modify the surface, we would actually be modifying the geometry that goes into a surface definition. So in this way, they're detached from each other. So again, I have selected the feature line under this context sensitive menu. I make sure that I have my edit elevations uh, button selected. And I'm going to the elevation editor and I have access to the individual vertices. There is, however, a different way of accessing this kind of elevation. It might be a little bit more intuitive for some. And this little button over here, quick elevation edit. So again, under edit elevation, the first one over here, just select it. And then if I hover over a uh, vertex, it snaps to these automatically and is reading out the current elevation over here. If I hover over the middle of the line, the midpoint is going to tell me what is the grade between them. And you see, if I move my cursor towards the right, it says, okay, so it's going from this point to that point. That's why it's minus 1%. But if I'm closer to this point, the direction changes. So the readout is from that point to this one is 1%, right? So this is negative, this is positive. And here I can read this elevation over here. But I can also just click it. It doesn't have to be exact. It snaps automatically. And I can change it. So I can type it to 5.32. And then now I can verify the grade has changed as well. You see, 1.42. And then what used to be a zero grade is 0 0.24. I can also just click over here, and then uh, again, the direction is important. So if I'm facing this way, I'm going to be modifying this elevation point. If, I, uh, if I'm facing that way, I'm, I'll be modifying that one. So I want to keep this one intact, 5.7. I just click over here and say I want to be minus one uh, grade percent. And then it's going to fix what I just did and bring it back to 5.32. Okay, so it's also it's a very intuitive way of of uh, creating drainage patterns in this way. Okay, so what if we wanted to apply the same principle to a linear feature, right? This is a closed loop, and then we um, we we already have a surface here, but uh, we want to create a path, and in this path. Um, well, the way I described it over here is it has a center line. I put it on a separate layer, and then I have my both side lines and they are polar lines on a uh, on another layer as well. This is also a polar line, so all of them are still polar lines. What I would like to do though is I would like to make sure that I have in this new path, proposed path, that I will be first of all I would like to understand what is the context of it. So put a spot elevation maybe over here, another one over here, and there's already one over there. So let me just remove this one for confusion. Okay, so the first thing that we see, this is 7.8, 6.2, 5.7. So we already have natural grade over here. I would like this path to actually follow this grade as much as possible, but I would also like it to be at least, you know, 1% in the oblong direction, so going from here to there. But I would also like it to be sloping to one side, and I'm just thinking maybe it should slope towards the other path, right? So that this would be a higher edge and this would be the lower edge. So I would like to have 1% slope in the longitudinal direction and 2.5% slope in the perpendicular direction. That's very typical for for your paths in the landscape. Okay, so how would I approach that? First of all, um, there's no one way of doing these things. I'll show you. Uh, I'll show you one approach. You could you could also do it in, in many other ways. First of all, let's just create a feature line out of this particular outside edge. So I'll create a feature line, create feature lines from objects, and I accept all the defaults. Okay. First thing that you would see is that there was zero elevations assigned to that particular uh, polar line. It was flat, so uh, it also reflects 
here, if I open the elevation editor, it says it only has two control points, um, and both of them are at zero. So let's just bring them up to something more sensitive. We already know we need at least 5.7. So what I can do is I can select multiple. So I just click the first one and hold shift on the last one. In this case, it's only two, but it could be like many, many more. And then I just need to type in 5.7 um, in, in one of these cells and then it will update all of them. Okay, so what we have done is we have successfully converted that whole polyline to a feature line and it's right now laying flat at 5.7 meters, which is also visible over here. But at this point, I would like it to be at 7.8. I go to my quick elevation edit and I can select this point and 7.8, apply, perfect. And while still uh, being in the command, I would like to understand what is the slope. It's minus 2.55, right? So I already have 2.5 grade going down there. Uh, but I don't know what's happening here. I would like this point, because there's there's going to, be going to be an intersection over here. I would like to actually fix that at 6.2. And I don't have any geometry right now over here. So what I would need to do is make sure, making sure that my edit geometry button is still selected under the feature line tab. So if I deselect it, um, I'm by default on my home tab. But the moment I select a feature line, then this context sensitive menu appears and the geometry has to be turned on for you to be able to see these buttons over here. And then I can insert a PI. A PI is just a point of in intersection. And here, make sure that you actually turn off your snaps so that uh, it doesn't snap to a random point somewhere else. And then if you shift right click, then you'll be presented with this temporary snap menu that you can override and anything else and then just choose the nearest point. So you want to snap to the nearest point somewhere here. And then it's going to ask you about what is the elevation of that point. And let's just, we already know we want it to be at 6.2. So let's just type it in here, 6.2. And then it wants to, you know, if you wanted to, you could uh, continue adding more points. For now, I'm good, so I just accept, accept uh, by hitting enter twice. And now, what happened? First of all, we can double check in the elevation editor. We have our additional control point added, and we can see that it has different slopes over here, right? So again, I can also verify that using this quick elevation tool. Uh, so this guy over here is 5.7, this is 6.2 as I wanted, and then this grade is 2.04. So maybe I would like it to be you know, consistent, like it's very difficult to build something like that. So let's just uh, you know, agree that we're, we want this, uh, let's double check that, this is 2.77, right? Uh, so I would like this section of my path to be at 2% grade, whereas this one, I would like it to be at 2.8. But I want this to be a tie-in point, right? I don't want to modify that anymore, so I will be working myself upwards from here. So this is, I leave it, make sure that my arrow is pointing in the direction away from it, I click once, and then I'm specifying the grade of 2%, which has effectively modified that point to 6.89, 6.19, exactly as it's here. And then I move away from that point and I want it to be 2.8%. So again, make sure that I'm not uh, closer to this point, I'm facing away, the arrow is uh, facing away from my point, I click 2.8, perfect. And then so this point is right now at 7.81 meters. And I have continuous 2.8, the slope from here to there. Okay, so we have uh, we have taken care of one side of it, and then how would we take care of the other side, where we want this particular point to, or sorry, the left side of this path to have exactly two and a half percent cross slope? Well, it turns out that there is again under Edit Geometry, there is a command that's designed to just 
do that. It's a stepped offset. And so we just click that. And the first thing we're going to be asked to, uh, to fill in here is what is the offset distance? So how far away are these from each other? And I want them to be two meters wide. And what is the side to offset to? It will be the left side. And what's the elevation difference? Well, I don't really want to calculate that, but I can choose from here. I can choose that I want it to be following a certain grade. And in this case, it's minus because I want this side to be higher. So I want it to go down the other one. So it's minus 2.5. And, uh, and then I just hit escape uh, so, or enter to uh, go outside of the command. And what, what you can see here is that I have this underlying polyline that I don't really need anymore. So I'm just going to um, delete it, this polyline. But I'm presented with the new feature line that you know has been offset from the other one. And then I can just go into this elevation editor and then hover over this guy and it says 5.65, whereas this one over here is 5.7. So, well, it makes sense. The difference from here to there is five centimeters. And because I have two meters distance over two and a half percent uh, cross grade, that's exactly what, what it comes down to. And you can see that it has calculated all the other intermediate points as well, and it has kept the, so here the difference will be exactly the same, five centimeters between this one and that one, and then it has kept exactly the same slopes over the, the entire length. Okay, so perfect, we have that, but well, this is a section that I will not, it will be, not be useful to me, so what I can do is Select this one, and since it's a feature line, like the traditional, uh, you know, trim commands uh, that you would use for lines or polar lines, they do not apply. But under again, edit geometry, not elevations, but geometry, we have this first icon over here that says break. And what we can do is, well, first of all, we need to select the object to break it. That's this one, and then again, uh, turning on my object snaps now, I wanted to break here that will be one and then i can just grab this one and uh, well i can i can use another of these commands over here i would like to trim it so let me just trim that uh which is the cut, cutting edge it would be the cutting edge over here and this one and it has created another point over here which uh, again going to my quick elevation edit i can verify six one two eight continues with this slope that I had. But here, it, it actually, uh, that's, a, that's a good example to, to check. This one, and the little, what is it, like four meters over here, not even like one meter, has 2% grade, and this one has 2.8%. And there's another tool for this, right? Uh, we would like to have a consistent grade from here to somewhere there. And in fact, I'll show you how practical this is. I'll just introduce a few more, uh, a few more points. I'll just accept uh, nearest. Yeah. Okay. So now you, you see we have one, two, three, four, five elevation points that we would like to have consistent grade over. And then for that, there is a set grade slope between points command again under edit elevations. So what I want, what I can do with that is I can select first point that I will be starting at, and then I will go all the way. Uh, it's asking me which is the station elevation. I want to accept the the one that's there, and then I want to go all the way to the end point, which is uh, I just need to drag it over. Okay, that's a that's a good point. I was zoomed in too far in, and Civil for did couldn't sort of like make a connection. So I had to zoom out and then you can see if I, the moment I hover over it, it shows me the other triangles here and now I can zoom in. So I want to go all the way to this, to the last point and then click on it and say, what is the grade that I'm going for? And I'm actually going for minus 2.8 to match the other one exactly. And, and now if I did everything correctly, 
I can see that I have my 2.8 grade matching the one on the other side. Sometimes it's, you know, uh, we have too much geometry, we don't really care about it. Um, delete PI is exactly uh, a command that does that. So, you know, in this particular case, I'm happy with on, only having two points. It's way easier to work with. I don't have to, also my elevation editor looks way easier. It's easier to control. So I just use this delete PI command to do that. Okay, so now I have a, um, like my, my scaffolding, my base prepared to create this first, um, well, it's not your first uh, surface, but it will be a first path surface. So what I do here is um, surfaces, right click, create surface, exactly the same procedure, my finished ground surface, and then it's going to be my path. And I can keep the style as is. And then I have, now that I'm working with feature lines, I have two options. I could either go, you know, twirl this one open, definition, right click, add a, add a break line, you know, confirm all, all this and then select these two break lines. Or there's a faster way of, of working where I can just select these two break lines. I'm oh, sorry, it's free actually, these free uh, feature lines. And then in the context sensitive menu to feature lines, I can just add them to a surface as break line. So there is, there is a command specific, specifically doing that. Just click it and then I'm asked, which surface do you want me to add these to? Well, we just said FG path, okay, and then okay. And then what it has done, let's let's see, it's always a good idea to, after we, we have added some geometry to have a look at the final results. I'm selecting the thin surface, I'm going to the object viewer, and I can see, well, there is something there. And if I look closely, there is a, a tipping point over here. And uh, it seems that, you know, there's a difference in grading. So it seems like it's, you know, it did the trick. So this would be your uh, assignment to go through all your paths and then create surfaces based on these. And um, so the same, same would be true, true for, for this particular one that I have over here. Same would be true for that. And if for whatever reason, like me over here, you were working with splines before, uh, there is no way to create a feature line from a spline. So it just uh, the moment I say feature line from object, it asks, tells me exactly which which kind of object uh, Civil 3D expects. So it's either lines, arcs, polylines, or 3D polyline. So I'm I cannot ex uh, select this spline. It's preventing me from doing that. So what I would need to do here is I would need to convert this spline to a polyline first, and then I can convert the feature line. So exactly the same uh, procedure as we used to convert the um, this line representing a hill. Okay, so um, so using using this procedure, uh, please cr create all the linear features that you have on your site, uh, and also add some grading. So there should not be any surface that's flat. So you see. Each of these corners has a different elevation, and I can confirm that again by going to the elevation editor of this particular um, feature line. Okay, so let me just uh, look into my notes over here. We have covered uh, working with feature lines in the elevation editor. We have also covered working with them in a um, geometry editor. And now I'll, I'm going to show you how, how to create stairs. And the next step would be how to create hills and holes. It's exactly the same, uh, same uh, concept. Um, so let's start with the stairs. I have, um, I have a few sets of, uh, of staircases that I would like to introduce to, to my design. You know, this is a, a road. I would like pedestrians to be able to come out of, of, of this road and then maybe sit on these or just step down and be closer to the water because I assume that my river level is going to be somewhere over here and it's going to be lower than the 
um, than the surrounding ground. As you can see here, I have three polar lines and all of them are at elevation zero. So first of all, what I need to do is I need to understand again the concept, uh, sorry, the context. Uh, for that, I'm selecting the existing ground surface, you can see here. And I'm, I'll again add some spot elevations. You can see that I'm doing this pretty much all the time, just trying to understand you know, what I'm working with, what are my elevations. And then maybe I'll just copy this one as well to understand ooh, how does it look like over here and there. Okay. <clears throat> so we have a fairly clear picture right now. Let's assume that this is the, the top elevation that I would keep in my design. And so there is a little bit of a slope going from here to there. And so let's say that this entire uh, staircase should be at starting at least at 6.8 meters. And then, then I'll, uh, I'll continue with that. So to make it a little bit easier, I'll just do it. Oops, uh, I didn't want to delete these. I only wanted to delete the, the labels to make it a little bit clearer on the visuals. So first thing that I would do is I would select all these. We just said 6.8. Uh, as long as they are polylines, I can uh, set the elevation over here, 6.8. Done. Three of them have that. And then I would like to create feature lines. So again, feature lines, create from objects, set all three, then accept the default. And all of them are already at 6.8 meters elevation. Then what I would like to do is I would like to create the, uh, the stairs. And then the one thing you would need to remember from the lecture day that I gave about different types of terrain models, that we're working with a thin surface definition, right? Triangulated irregular network. And then one of the caveats about working with this kind of data is that it's a two and a half D model. So for any X, Y point, we can only have one elevation value assigned to it. Therefore, in the real life, our uh, I'm just I'm just going to draw a section over here to make it uh, to make it a little bit more illustrative. So if we were working, uh, this is going to represent a staircase. In real life, this point and that point would be exactly uh, aligned, right? So this line would be a vertical line, vertical line. Whereas Silver 3D or any other CAD software they cannot really uh, represent these points. They get confused. So what we need to introduce is we need to introduce a little bit of an offset. So what I just did is I just move this point slightly to the right. It's important I cannot move it to the left because then I would have an overhang. So exaggerated, it, it cannot look like that, but exaggerated, it can look like this. And then, so if you understand the limitation of the, of the surface definition, then it's sort of obvious what I need to do now, right? I This is, a, again, a cross-sectional view of my staircase. So in a top view, what, I, what I'm looking at is I'm looking at this point, that point, and that point right now. Uh, but I'm, I cannot see this one and that one and that one, which also needs to be moved to the side. So I just need to introduce them. So I'll delete this sketch, go back to my staircase. So what I need to do is I actually need to select this particular, uh, let's start with the top and work ourselves down. Uh, I would like to offset this, um, this particular uh, edge, which represents the top edge of my staircase, and the same command as, as we used for creating a path, but I wouldn't be offsetting it by two meters now, I would just offset it by one centimeter, because I wanted to go, you know, like as close as possible to vertical, but not vertical. So it's one, um, and then which side? I want it to go down because it's the bottom of the stair. And then rather than saying, you know, what is the percentage value between these, right? So what is the grade? I actually want to specify the difference, elevation difference. So I don't really know how high this one is, but I know that I want it to be, uh, let's say 50 centimeters lower. So it's minus 0.5, right? 
And then it doesn't look like much at the first sight, but if I look closer here, I have two uh, edges. The top edge is at, uh, where's my elevation here? 6.8, whereas the bottom one is at 6.3. So it has created uh, the elevation difference for me. And then now going back to the sketch, maybe I'll just uh, draw it here. Bam, 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 bam. Bam. So this is what we want. Right now what we have done is we have created this offset. So and we and then over here we're at 6.8 and here we're at 6.3. So this point represented by that edge also needs to be at 6.3, which it isn't at the moment, it's at 6.8. There is another command under added elevations over here, raise lower. It allows me to lower the uh, the feature line relatively to, to whatever elevation it has. And I want it to be minus 0.5. And it has just done that. So just to verify that, 6.3. And now I just need to do exactly the same. So I'm, I'm, I have successfully defined this edge over here. And now I just need to say, you know what? Like offset this guy by one centimeter, and Civil 3D remembers your last input. So confirm which side? Well, over here. And what is the elevation difference? Well, it remembers it too. So just confirm. And so now what we have done is we have moved this point slightly, and we still need one more to go. So again, the same procedure. We are at elevation. 5.8 over here. So this edge also needs to go at 5.8. So we can also do it in the elevation editor. There's multiple ways of doing that. Select all 5.8, confirm, confirm, and then go to the offset. Uh, yes, one centimeter this side and 50 centimeters lower. And now we have our all together. If I select them, we have six feature lines. So let's see uh, what will happen if we want to create a surface out of these. We can, even though we don't have the surface yet, because I would like them to create a new surface, I can still say add uh, to surfaces break line. Well, no, nothing here. I can just sit, hit this plus button and create a new one. So this is my FG finished ground stairs. Uh, if I can spell it correctly, stairs. Okay, okay. And then let's just, again, accept just the defaults and let's see what happened. Uh, again, first thing that I do each time I have created a new surface, select it, right click, object viewer, have a look at it. And well, it looks pretty good to me. So we have our you know surface that will be coming out from here. We haven't modeled it. And then there is, uh, there is a drop that's uh, almost vertical, but it's not really. And then we have our our surface of our steps that we have defined. I believe it was also one and a half meters or two meters over here, and 50 centimeters elevation drop. And remember, we have not defined these edges at all. But what's happening by default is that the surface model is trying to triangulate, so essentially connect these uh, these loose ends. And so our sketch that looks like that right now, uh, again, this is just a cross-sectional view of that, right? So we only, we actually never had this uh, portion. We only had it like that, right? So we had a top edge, bang, 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 and two edges. Okay, I can remove that. And again, if you have multiple staircases, this would be the procedure that you should follow. Uh, remember about the limitation of the surface, right? Even though you most probably only drew one edge, you would always need a top and a bottom edge, top, bottom, top, bottom. And here uh, you can just test. Uh, I, I have created an arc over here, or essentially these three uh, arcs are representing this, um, this particular staircase. Actually, arcs are the type of geometry that can be converted to uh, feature lines directly. So, so with arcs we can do that, with polylines we can do it, and this is also a spline, 
a spline cannot be converted to a feature line, we would need to convert uh, a spline to, an, to a pole line first. Good. Um, so we have covered these topics. And then one more to go, uh, which is creating hills and holes. It's exactly the same procedure. One goes up, the other one goes down. And here, let's just take this particular example uh, to... Oh, you know what? We already have this, uh, this converted, so maybe let's just keep working with this one. Uh, so this is my FG island. But you know, at the moment, if I again just show you in the object viewer, it doesn't look like much, right? It's just a flat sheet of um, what is it like a blob? I can uh, I can verify that as well. Just uh, look at the polyline, line, and the whole thing lies on uh, on an elevation of six. So what I would like to do again, I would like to start with converting the the underlying polyline to a feature line, create a feature line from objects, you know the drill already, erase uh, existing entities, yes, I don't want that anymore. And here, again, under elevation editor, we can see that, let me just twill that open, um, you can see that we have multiple points, um, and all of them are at six, six meters elevation. What I would like to show you here, just, just for demonstration purposes, is that you can literally select all of them like this. So I click the first one on top, I'm scrolling all the way down, shift, click, and then I can click anywhere and then just change this elevation to whatever, 567, and it affects all of them at the same time, right? Control A, we'll do the same 5.8, I believe that's where we started. So let's go back. Um, FG Island, I can see it's complaining. Why is it complaining? Because I have deleted the underlying polyline line and I have uh, replaced the geometry that went into its definition. So I just need to right click rebuild automatic to um, allow Civil 3D to update each time I introduce any changes to the drawing. Cool, uh, but we, we actually wanted to uh, make it a little bit more interesting in a way that, um, that we would introduce more geometry into it. And there's two ways of doing it, right? One way would be to say, okay, let's create a spline. And uh, I just need to turn off my ortho for it to be a little bit easier to draw. And then I could, for example, here, uh, create something like this, you know, massage it um, to, to a position that I, to a shape that I really like. And this would be sort of like creating another contour line, you know, in my mind conceptually, and yet another one, yet another one. So I could do that and then put them on, on higher elevations and then uh, try and work with, with this approach. Or what I can do is I can also just select the feature line and again, using the same stepped offset approach, I could say, you know what, let's just offset it inwards by just trying to get a grasp for scale. Let's get one and a half meters maybe. I want it to be going inwards, and then the elevation difference would be, you know, well, let's just go up by, I don't know, like one meter. Okay, and then I can, while still being in the command, I can just select this one again, which side this one, and then is it still one meter? Yeah, let's go continue with one meter, and maybe let's do one more over here, over here. Perfect, and one more there. Good. And what you'll notice is that Super 3D is smart enough to you know, shrink it and also um, remove unnecessary vertices over here. So what we have done is we have the outside and one, two, three, four additional feature lines right now. And they all are at different elevations. So this is 6.8, uh, this is 7.8, and so on, 8.8. .8. And now what I can do is I can just select the new ones, select again in this context sensitive menu, add to surfaces break line, and I want it to be my FG island. Okay. And here, what you want to pay attention to whenever you're working with uh, spline geometry in general, but also like very, um, like say, organic shapes, you want to make sure that you're 
mid-ordinate distance. I don't want to go into details. It's essentially the distance that, uh, while civil 3D is going to triangulate, that is how accurate should it be while representing um, organic features. So some anything that's curved. And then the lower this distance is, the higher the precision. So I would just go to maybe 0 0.1 in this case, um, and then hit OK. And then you can see that you know immediately something happened. It has created um, a like more geometry in there, and because it was set to automatically rebuild, rebuild automatic, then it doesn't complain. It has to rebuild it for me. Again, first thing that I do each time after I have created a surface, select it, right click somewhere outside of it, go to the object viewer, and show it to me. Okay. Well, it's looking all right. So we have created some some fairly good looking geometry from, from some angles. Obviously this tip over here is a bit flat, but that's to be expected because we have only introduced um, you know line features. So it, it doesn't know what to what to do about it. But then why do these look this in the stepped way, in the stepped fashion, right? Especially this one. Why is it uh, why does it stop over here? And this is one of the reasons why you know you have to be working with triangles to understand why the the issue occurred. So if I was to work with a different style that only has contours, so I just select contours one and five background, it would just show you a contour line, but you wouldn't well that we also see in 3D, but I wouldn't understand why um, why it happens. And more importantly, I wouldn't be able to fix it if I'm working with contours. That's why, again, selecting style, go back to my triangle style. And then what I can see here is that super 3D, let's try and look at it in 3D again, but using a different style. So I'm just changing it to shade of edges. Here it's a little bit more visible. That the triangulation that occurred, this point, is always going to try create a uh, seek for the nearest neighbor to create a triangle two, and then from there this guy has the nearest neighbor over here. That's why this triangle occurred. But we actually wanted to go all the way from here to there to create a nice ridge, and the same thing would be true over here. We wanted to connect there and connect there, right? Always the same principle. But so if we understand that the the tin surface always is looking for the nearest neighbor we want to find a way to override it and how would we do it is we would select the surface and then under the edit surface uh, button we just click on it over here and then third from the top is swap edge we want to be able to move these around and then how do we do that is we click on the edges and then where we see that they sort of like it only has two ways to go so either i connect it like that or like that no other way and then it's important to be working yourself from the bottom to the top kind of um, and then i do the same thing with the next one and then this one can also be flipped and this can be flipped and that can be flipped and that and that and that and that and you see now it did what i wanted it to do right it connected the top edge over here with this one. So let's just verify that what we did was correct. And indeed it is. Right? And you can, I can understand that it's a bit difficult to, um, to get a grasp of what I just did. It took me a while to, to develop intuition for, okay, which triangles do I need, do I need to flip? To, uh, to arrive at a desired result. And it took a little bit of, you know, of going back and forth between, uh, between this top view and a 3D view. So over here, like, again, trying to help give you some clues on, on what to seek for is you sort of see this is the outside edge, right? Between this green line and that green line. And this is the other outside edge. So this is the, the one that doesn't work. And I can see it over here, right? This triangle, that's the short one. And this is the flat plane over here. And actually, I want the connection to go from here all the way to that point. I want this ridge line to be continued all the way here. 
And again, I cannot start working myself from here to there because I can show you why. Edit surface, swap edge. I can only swap that edge, and then I can swap that edge, and that edge, and that, that edge, and then eventually I'm, I'm just going to, maybe it's going to work, let's see. Ah, let's see, it doesn't look that bad, but maybe, fingers crossed. Yeah, okay, cool. So sometimes it's okay. Sometimes it allows you to work from uh, from top to bottom. Not always though. Um, and then here you sort of like see the pattern. And then again, I know it's hard to, uh, how to see that the first time, but then trust me, the more you do it, the easier it's going to be to identify the spots. Again, swap edge. And then I'm swapping this one, this one, this, uh, this one, yeah, you see? So now I'm, I arrived at the point where Silverfree did, uh, doesn't allow me to swap these edges anymore. But uh, but here it should, let's try. So if I'm, I started working myself from the, uh, the bottom and, and then I would work here and there. Sometimes you, you just need to swap a few edges to uh, to be able to. Uh, I think I, I messed it up a bit. You see, yeah, I didn't fix uh, fix it all, and I think I would need to spend a little bit more time doing that. But for the sake of keeping this video short, um, you would have to sort of like go through these, and then also I believe there was an error somewhere on the side, on the front. And then, so just flip flip these triangles um, until they they create a a perfect surface like like we have achieved over here at the at the bottom. So that would be that would be one part, and then the other one is okay. How to fix this flat flat edge on the top? Like I mean, we don't want unless we this is the look that we're going for that we want people to be able to you know, uh, or I know birds or some someone just to hang out at this platform. We want it to be flat. But what if, let's say that we don't? Um, well, if we look in, into our surface definition, FG island definition, so far we have only been working with the uh, with break lines. But we could obviously add other features to it, right? So what I can add is I can just create a point. So under point creation tools, point, and then there is just one, the first one from the left, uh, manual point creation. And I can just click over here and uh, it asks me for a point description. I just accept the default. Point elevation, to be honest, I don't know what makes sense. So I just start with 10. And then we have one point over here. And by default, it ended up being in my uh, all points point group. But that's not, a not what I want because I can only add point groups to my surface. So I need to create a point group I just call it new, and this would be my island, uh, basic style, whatever, except defaults, and let's just uh, add it to the to the surface definition. So again, under my surfaces, FG island definition, point groups, right click, add, and ah, sorry, before that, I need to add this guy to my. <laughs> Um, to my point group. So I need to select it and um, mm -mm -mm. how do I do that? That's a good, a good thing, a good question. Haven't done it for a while. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Property not set, name, let's just give it a name, island. And then let's do it like this. Um, I would go to island, point group, island, and then I would say properties. And then under include, I would say with names matching island and then asterisk. And then right now it has included one point. So what I did is I Again, I gave it a name over here, and then I'm telling the point group that it should, under its properties, that it should 
include all the points matching this pattern. So it's an island uh, that it starts with, and then there will be some uh, potentially some something else to follow. Okay. Um, okay. So FG island surface definition point groups add, and then I want to add the island point group. Okay. And now I should be able to see what has happened here. Oh, it's a very, very tiny bump over here because I have chosen, you know, 10 meters. Uh, let me just update the elevation of this point uh, to 15 meters, uh, just to make it a little bit more obvious. Uh -huh. It doesn't allow me to do that because of the triangulation there, I believe. Um, okay, you know what? Uh, I'll look it up and uh, and then update you during the last uh, during the the next video on how to work with it better. So for now, let's just delete this guy. Let's just remove the. Uh, I'll just delete the point, and um, I need to update, and that's perfect. Um, so let's let's just for now leave it as is with our um, surfaces defined by feature lines and then these should be if you want to create so right now it's a hill but if you think of it as a I just flipped it if you think of it as a hole in the ground it's exactly the same procedure you just need to rather than going up as I did, you would just need to be offsetting inwards and going down, and and this way you can you can create your uh, your swales or holes in the ground, and you'll be cutting into that. Great, a lot of material that we have covered so far, and um, I'll stop recording for now. What I would like you to do is uh, for the next exercise. Is that you would go through all the portions of your sketches and then convert them to proper surfaces. So again, all the paths should be represented as surfaces, as individual surfaces, uh, creating separate paths. All the platforms, they again should be individual surfaces and they should have um, proper drainage to it, meaning elevation points. I I don't want to see any only flat surfaces. So all surface should have some um, slope to it in at least one direction. So the path should have a longitudinal slope and a cross sectional slope. And then over here, I also have a slope over here and over there. And this can be a zero as long as water can flow out. I want to see a few hills and a few holes in the ground and also uh, for, for those of you who have some staircases, uh, they should also be represented uh, the way I, I shown you. Okay, good luck, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the results.